Good morning and welcome to our Wednesday service of morning prayer. We hope you've had a good week and uh, we're very grateful today that the, the rain isn't pouring down on us so we thought we'd take the opportunity and come out while we could um, to take advantage of some decent weather and, and a little bit of sunshine if we're lucky. So let's take a moment and bring our hearts and minds before God. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. O Lord, open our lips and, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our first hymn today is All My Hope on God is Founded. He does still my trust renew Me through change and chance he guideth Only good and only true God unknown, he alone Calls my heart to be his own Daily doth the almighty on us be still. His desire, our soul delighteth. Pleasure leads us where we go. Love doth stand at his hand. Joy doth wait on his command. Still from man to God eternal. Sacrifice of praise be done High above all praises praising For the gift of Christ his Son Christ doth call one and all Ye who follow shall not fall The night has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 128. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labour of your hands. You shall be happy and it should go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children Peace be upon Israel. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Luke 12, verses 1 to 12. Meanwhile, when the crowd gathered by the thousands, so that they trampled on one another, he began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, that is their hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up or that, that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. <clears throat> I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man also will acknowledge before the angels of God. 
But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that every hour what you ought to say. Thank you, Gail. So what do you fear as a Christian? What do I? Are there things about being a disciple of Jesus that causes us anxiety, worry or fear? One of the fears that we often face is the reaction of other people. Jesus has thousands who are gathering to hear him. The throng of people is so great that they're trampling one another. As this massive crowd is pressing in, Jesus continues to teach his disciples. Jesus warns them about hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is like leaven, spreading through, in this case, like a contagion. Having an outward appearance of godliness, but being full of sinfulness inwardly, is like a disease. And this is why Jesus continues to issue such strong warnings. It is so easy and tempting for us to elevate obedience to the laws of God to such a point that we ignore the heart and motive behind the obedience that God commands. God never commanded his people to keep the rules. God never asks for the people to just make sure they do what God says. Left alone, this contagion will spread such that people will think Christianity is rule keeping. People will sing because God commanded it, but will not sing from the heart and with the words pricking the heart. We will pray, but we'll not pray words from our hearts. We will just offer form and form prayers with words that we've heard others say. We will partake of the Lord's Supper, but we'll not be moved in the heart as we remember the death of the Lord. Jesus declares that the day will come when our hypocrisy will be revealed. Jesus says in verse 2 that there's nothing that we cover up which will not be revealed. Our secrets will be brought to the light. Jesus is telling his disciples not to be afraid of the religious leaders. The Pharisees, lawyers and Sadducees had the power to make the disciples' lives miserable and even to kill them. These were the ones who had, killed, who had Jesus killed and had a significant number of the early church persecuted and killed. Yet Jesus says we must not fear people who can harm the body. So what if people rebuke you, mock you or scorn you? Only God has true authority. The only fear that should control our lives is the fear of God. Being a people pleaser is not being a Christian. We have to be God pleasers. And God cares for you. Jesus tells us these words so that we can avoid being cast in hell. God is not trying to cause our mocking and suffering, but we need to clearly understand that pleasing God is not the most important thing. It's the only thing. Notice the picture that Jesus gives. A sparrow was the cheapest thing in the marketplace. Five sparrows could be purchased for two pennies. Even though their value is so low, they are not forgotten by God. God's people are way more valuable than birds. God will not forget us. God cares about us. God knows what is happening in our life. I love the metaphor that Jesus uses about knowing the number of hairs on our heads. Knowing the hairs on our heads is not pertinent information. The point is that our Lord absolutely knows what is happening to us. He knows what we're going through. He knows who we are and he cares about each one of us. Do not succumb to the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. Do not succumb to the fear of people or other Christians. The Lord knows those who are his. Amen.
Our second hymn today is a wonderful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night, night is far spent, spent and, and the, the day, day is, is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for, for the, the night, night is far spent. spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. For the, For the day, day is, is at, at hand. hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. For, For the, the night, night is far spent, spent and, and the, the day, day is at hand. hand. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us come before God our Maker to make our prayers to him through Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that the church may be alive to do God's will, always ready to act in his loving service for the good of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray that all leaders will be wise and careful in all their decisions, that they may discern your leading for the well-being of all. We ask for your guidance in the way we care for our planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray for all close relationships, that there may be mutual love respect. We pray for those whose relationships are under pressure. And we lift to you the lonely, that they may know your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are suffering through illness, accident or deliberate cruelty. We bring before you refugees and all who are abused that they may know your love and care through the work of our human hands. We thank you for the love and care given and received here at Presswood and pray your blessings upon everyone in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you our thanks and praise for the gift of one another and the gift of life. May all those who have passed from this earthly life be rejoicing in your presence in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercies and protection of God. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. 
sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together, Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us, in whichever form you feel most comfortable with. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Fight the Good Fight. Fight the good fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life and it shall be thy joy and crown eternally. Cast care aside, lean on thy guide. His boundless mercy will provide. Trust and thy trusting soul shall prove Christ is its life and Christ its love. Faint not nor fear, his arms are near. He changes not and thou art dear. Only believe and thou shalt see that Christ is all in all to thee. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Well, thank you all for joining with us this morning. We hope you've enjoyed our service and we hope you have a very good week ahead. We'll see you next time. God bless. <laughs>